Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And now, on to our book review. Today, we are looking at the latest poetry works by Ebenezer B. Longen. Now, the book itself is rather sturdy. Hardback, always a good standard of a book. It is approximately 10 inches in width and contains 234 pages and that is a very good read for any of our readers at home. The cover itself is of a autumn aesthetic with its use of rich reds and golds. There is also a silhouette of a young woman. Very mysterious indeed, don't you think? There's a kind of wasp that seeks out tarantulas and other large spiders. Although the spider is far bigger, it can become prey of a sort for the wasp. A struggle, a sting. The spider is paralyzed. It will wake to find itself trapped, isolated and alone, far from any help. Buried in a deep, dark hole with no way to escape. And then the egg hatches. The wasp larva will devour the spider slowly, from the inside out, eating non-vital organs first, to keep its meal alive for as long as possible. The spider is awake and aware as it's devoured. It knows what is happening to it, and it can feel it as much as an arachnid can feel. Eventually having devoured its host, the wasp will break free from the hole, and it will find a mate another spider, and we'll begin the cycle again. Good evening. You are listening to The Switchboard, connecting all points in humanity's ongoing voyage into the unknown. I am the host, and it is 17 years since the beginning of the end. 
Apophenia, a tendency to see connections and patterns where none exist. Related to pareidolia, a tendency to misinterpret sounds and images as containing information they do not. Like when people think they see the face of Christ in a slice of toast. Organizations like the Association for Skeptical Inquiry, the Independent Investigations Group, and the Strand Institute love to throw words around in, re in relation to the realities we have seen. Most of the emails I receive are reports and messages for me to broadcast. Occasionally I will receive thanks for the work I do, but often times I receive messages chastising me for feeding the apophenia of my listeners. Perhaps they are right to do so. I have no means to say whether the reports I receive are true or not. I report what I am given, nothing more. But I will say that I have seen firsthand that these things can be real, and that is justification enough for what I do. There is another, more recent word that I feel is relevant to the discussion, and that word is randomania. A tendency to dismiss or refusal to see obvious connections and patterns. As I've said before, I am no investigator. I make no claims as to the authenticity of my reports, but nor do I make any profit from my work. I have no merchandise to sell. I do not take donations. I have no advertisements. But if I've seen these things for myself, then others have as well. They must have. There is only so much hand-waving of eyewitness reports that can happen before we must accept that these people are seeing only what they want. I do not think it's an organized conspiracy. I don't believe in the Illuminati or secret global organizations hiding the truth. I think it's fear. They are too scared to allow themselves to see what is staring them right in the face, and I cannot blame them. I only wish that I could be like them and return to blissful ignorance. Our anonymous benefactor has managed to acquire a report regarding Bao's fishing vessel, the Du Zhao Jing. This report is from the African Maritime Law Enforcement Partnership, who discovered the Du Zhao Jing adrift off the west coast of Africa. Autopsies on the crew confirmed that the gnawed and butchered sorry, remains suggested the crew had there. died of starvation, <laughs> and several crew members, including Bao Xiaoping, had yes, resorted to cannibalism to in order to survive. <laughs> the cargo hold was empty but coated in thick black sludge, not unlike oil. The ship itself was entirely without fuel, which explains why the ship was left to drift for so long. <coughs> oh, according to the ship's log, the radio had failed in the spring of the previous year and could never be repaired. Strangely, when checked, the radio was operating in perfect order. The log also mentioned the odd behaviour exhibited by the fish, that Biao Xiaoping had commented on in his journal, as well as the strange ship that had appeared that March. But perhaps, most unusually of all, the African Maritime Law Enforcement Partnership makes no mention of Biao Xiaoping's diary whatsoever. This report raises further questions. What was the sludge found in the cargo hold and what happened to the fish? What happened to the fuel and what caused the disturbance on the radio? We will be turning to Biao Xiaoping's diary for more answers. March 23rd, 2005. That other ship is very close. It has guns fore and aft. The guns are too big for it to be AMLP. We've tried shouting to them, but there was no response. Our own ship has become unbearably hot. We have no idea why. The radio must be broken. That screeching tone is still all that we can hear when we use it. If anything, the noise has gotten even louder, but it doesn't matter. The fish are swarming around us even more intensely. We've hit our quota today. We'll be returning home tomorrow. The radio can be fixed or replaced when we return to Hong Kong. March 24th, 2005. We will not be going home today. The engine will not start. The fuel is gone. There's no trace. It's simply vanished. The same goes for the generator and emergency generator. Neither one has a drop of fuel remaining. We have a small reserve of backup power, but that will not last us long at sea. Without power, the freezers and the cargo hold will shut down. Our whole catch will be lost. That strange ship has gotten closer. 
We've tried asking them for help, both on the radio and just shouting across the water, but they will not respond. I'm afraid that's as far as Samantha has translated for us so far. As always, we will continue when we have more... Oh... God, I wish this was legitimate. Oh, hold on. That was Rabbit Hole, performed by Sugar Plum Suicide and remixed by Neon Valley Cult. Up next, our weekly look at the top 10 hits. Thing. 
My apologies for the loss in signal again, as probably with every episode so far. We now return to the nightly report. Thank you for being so patient. Our fan and moor and city streets. Through fields and forests dark. Through dreams and poems and rhythmic beats. The Heron King, he walks. Cross words on page and word of mouth. In lakes and caverns deep. Through mind and thought and constant doubt. The Heron King, he walks. Between your eyes, between your ears, beneath your very scalp. Through all your waking, sleeping fears, the Heron King, he walks. Beneath your breast, inside your heart, inside your beating chest. In every joy that you take part, the Heron King, he walks. In all that's right, in all that's wrong, and all that's in between, through every story, every song, the Heron King, he walks. An archaeological dig in the Altai mountain range of Mongolia has found a pit filled entirely with human hands in a state of preservation that researchers have said can only be described as impossible. Carbon dating says they are over 2,000 years old, however their condition would suggest they have been severed no more than a week before their discovery. The hands have been relocated to the Mongolian Academy of Science in Ulan Batar for study. A 16-year-old boy has been found heavily anaesthetized in a London hotel room that has been sterilized to OR standards. A full regimen of antibiotics and anti-inflammatories were left upon the bedside table, along with directions for their use. The boy had a tightly and firmly structured incision on his left side and clean scarring that spelled the word thanks in a neat cursive hand. We thank an anonymous officer of the London Metropolitan Police for this information. Have you witnessed a supernatural event? Have you had an encounter with an entity you cannot explain? Do you have vital information for people around the world? If so, I will be happy to relay it. Please send all reports to the host switchboard, all one word, at gmail.com. For now, this is the host, reminding you never go at night, never go alone, and Always go armed. The Switchboard is a Hog and Dice production, written and directed by Stephen Jack Cullen with music by Thomas O'Boyle and Kevin MacLeod. The voice of the host was Keith Byrne. The voice of Samantha Coe was Alison Marcellus. You can find out more and see our other projects at hogandice.com. We really are open to your reports, so please send your written reports or audio recordings to the host switchboard at gmail.com or tweet it directly to the host at switchboardpod. This episode's broadcast failure was performed by Ashling McCabe and Anthea West. The song was Rabbit Hole by Sugar Plum Suicide, remixed by Neon Valley Cult. You can find out more at sugarplumsuicide.bandcamp.com. If you're in Dublin city centre and are looking for a place to sit and contemplate the meaningless of your existence, why not drop into the Clockwork Door? They have a games room, a study room, a fully stocked kitchen and a board games and reading room. You only have to pay for the time you spend there, and rates start at eight cent a minute for your first two hours. Find out more at clockworkdoor.ie. If you enjoyed today's episode, maybe you'd also like that sucking pit of despair you feel every time you think back to your childhood. <laughs>